Hello? Yes. Okay, can we start with the roll call? Yes, that's what I'm asking. Okay, roll call of finance committee members. Richard Balducci. Here. David Here. Elise Gray Kemp. Here. David Jimenez. I'm here, thank you. And Joanne Ryan. I'm here, thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, Monica Maldonado is here. Oh. I'm sorry, okay. Monica, okay, Monica Maldonado. Yes, thank you. Welcome aboard. Um, there's some background noise. If anybody can, if somebody can just uh, mute that, we'd appreciate it as we move along. Okay, uh, you've got that. The next uh, order of business would be approval of the minutes that we had uh, from the March 11th meeting. Uh, is there a motion to do so? I'll move. So moved. David, Second. thank you. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor signify saying aye. Bye. Bye. Those minutes are uh, adopted. Uh, now for the uh, one minute right we have for us, and we're going to—I'm going to turn that over to Ben to go through uh, the um, uh, overview and the impact of the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, so, uh, Ben, uh, if you would uh, take charge of this at the moment, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Thank you very much, Rich. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, if anybody can't hear me, please speak up and I'll speak louder because <laughs> um, there's not much else I can do. Uh, thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I thought it was helpful to give you some uh, a review of the sort of coronavirus uh, pandemic related financial implications uh, to the best of my knowledge now. Uh, I will start by saying that there's a lot that we don't know um, and a lot of uncertainty about um, uh, what's going to be happening in the uh, coming um, in the coming months. Uh, however, uh, I do want to go through some information that we do have. First of all, I want to talk about the CARES Act funding. Uh, as you recall, at the end of March, um, the federal government CARES Act that included uh, Six billion dollars in relief for higher education. Uh, sadly, we don't get six billion. Um, we are anticipating receiving uh, across all CSU institutions fifty-four point six billion dollars. This is el this eligibility for this was determined by instant by accredited institution based on a formula that uh, a, a weighted enrollment formula in which Pell eligible students were weighted. Uh, uh, Seventy-five percent, and uh, not uh, every, all students were weighted twenty-five percent. So we tended to do pretty well uh, in our distribution because we serve lots of Pell eligible students uh, uh, across the system, and uh, at some of our institutions, very high levels of Pell students. Um, uh, I would point out, though, that all online institutions get nothing under this formula, and so Charter Oak, uh, they may have been spared some of the. Uh, corruption of moving online, since they were already online, um, they are not immune to the uh, fallout from the economic consequences of the pandemic. Uh, but they have not received any um, any uh, funding from the, uh, from the federal government. Um, the fifty-four point six million that we received uh, under the CARES Act, uh, half of those grants must be provided. Um, as emergency financial aid to students. Uh, so that $27 million includes 14 for the community companies and 13 for the universities. Uh, and that has been, uh, uh, we are uh, have, uh, signed up for that. We want to make the application certifications. Uh, each campus has already done that. Uh, and I believe most of the campuses uh, have already received the funding through the federal government's funding distribution system. Uh, there may be a couple stragglers uh, that we should uh, uh, should receive uh, early next week. So that's been moving moving along fine. Student emergency aid half. That money um, uh, 
Uh, we uh, have uh, the plan. There are two sort of separate but similar plans for distributing those funds in the colleges and the university systems. And I'll quickly describe what those are for you. Um, in the in the colleges, uh, we are providing um, grants to every student uh, that we can. So we are uh, taking the approach to spread it widely uh, and to provide a financial boost to every student. So we are, um, if you are enrolled on Census Day, uh, or even if you enroll on Census Day, so anybody who has enrolled in a four credit um, program at the uh, at the colleges, excuse me, uh, will be um, uh, identified, and we're going to divide up the college the amount available by that number of students. Uh, the are going to be about depending on which college it is, because the, the, the Pell numbers are different at each school, the grant amounts are different, uh, but the, uh, the amount per student is going to range from uh, just under $300 to um, uh, probably a little over $400, depending on which college you're at. Uh, the, uh, I think um, Naugatuck and Gateway and Housatonic and Manchester uh, and Capital are the ones with the highest Pell uh, numbers and, and will be at the high end of that um, range of, of grant amounts. Um, we are we received late news uh, about a week ago from the US federal government uh, requiring, uh, in, we don't believe this is required in the law, but their guidance to institutions says that we must limit our grants to students who are Pell eligible, or Title IV eligible. Uh, that is <laughs> That ends up making up about 60% uh, of the total spring headcount. We had about 7,000 students at CSCU uh, for the spring headcount. Uh, and we're going to see um, about 42,000 of those are uh, FAP eligible uh, today. Um, so we are going to immediately send the checks out to the FAFSA eligible students. Uh, we have asked the federal government to relax their rules in order to allow us to reach the other 20, 28,000 students who are not uh, currently FAFSA eligible, have not filled out a FAFSA form. Uh, we will see whether the federal government is willing to relax those rules. If they are, we're holding money back to do a second round of payments to those students. If the federal government does not relax the rules in any way, we will send out a second payment to the first group. Uh, the universities are doing something very similar except that their distribution is a little bit more complicated and is based on the number of credits that a student is taking. Um, and uh, they provided a bonus for students who are Pell eligible, who are actually eligible for a grant as opposed to simply filling out a FAFSA. Um, those, uh, uh, those grants have already started to go out in the case of Central. And I think Southern uh, and Eastern and Western are uh, gonna be making payments in the coming days. Uh, the first round of payments at the community colleges is going to go out a week from Monday, uh, the 11th, I believe that is, of May. The reason we're waiting a little bit on the colleges is that um, uh, we had a relatively smaller number of our students who had signed up for direct deposit. Uh, it's more common at the universities, and they also went through a big push to get people signed up for direct deposit when they did the tuition and uh, room and board refunds. Uh, we are going through that process right now with the colleges. Uh, we've already had uh, something like 5,000 students, four or 5,000 students sign up for direct deposit since we encouraged them to do so uh, at the beginning of the week. They'll have one more week to sign up for that, and we can confirm that all those direct deposit uh, signups uh, were uh, done correctly. Uh, and then we will do the direct deposits and mail out checks. Uh, we were, you know, obviously we um, mailing out, you know, 30, 20 or 30,000 checks is no small duty. Uh, so we're really hopeful that the students will sign up for direct deposit. They'll get their money uh, early next week. The students who are expecting a check will probably uh, get that check a few days later. Um, you know, our printer can print about five or 6,000 checks a day. So we're, uh, we're, we're hoping to get those done uh, early in the first half of next week, depending on, uh, on the, the numbers we ultimately uh, get signed up for direct deposit. So that program, uh, we are really essentially stewards of, uh, you know, we've been asked by the federal government to process and distribute money on their behalf. Uh, and we have plans in place uh, that are underway to do that to all of our students 
So as many students as we can under the federal guidance, and we're hoping that they'll expand and allow us to uh, send it out to the rest of the students. Um, are there any questions about the CARE Act process that we've uh, embarked on? All right, I'm going to keep moving on. Uh, we have um, we reported expenditures to the state a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, well, we reported a couple weeks ago. It was uh, data through uh, April 7th, and I included in the pack a, a listing of that um, of those expenditures. We are uh, currently have a request pending with all the colleges um, and universities to to refresh this through the end of April. Uh, so we will. Um, uh, I will uh, provide that uh, summary table, uh, that information item to the board once it's available, uh, uh, probably in the second half of next week. Um, but as of April 7th, uh, we had identified $31.2 million worth of uh, coronavirus related expenses. The largest of those areas was just over $24 million in uh, uh, student, I'm sorry, just uh, uh, 25.6 million dollars in student refunds. Lion share of that was its the CSUs who awarded uh, 24.1 million dollar board refunds for the portion of the year that the students were not able to use their meal plans or live in the dorms. Uh, in addition, uh, Charter Oak uh, made about half a million dollars in refunds, and the community colleges made a little over a million dollars in refunds. These were courses where uh, students felt that they needed to, um, uh, or these are courses where the you know, the colleges themselves canceled uh, a class uh, because um, many of them were non-credit courses uh, or were you know lab portions of classes that could not be completed uh, during the normal semester. So it was a relatively small number of classes that were canceled, uh, um, which from a financial perspective, I'm I'm glad for. Um, also for continuity of education for the students. Um, so that's that's the lion's share of our expenses. We've also experienced uh, incurred about uh, as of early April five and a half million dollars of expenses. I expect that number will rise considerably because we only had sort of the early um, numbers for the efforts at the universities to convert uh, to clear out the dorms and uh, gymnasiums and other facilities to make room for uh, certain hospitals and uh, uh, accommodations for first responders and others. Um, I'm happy to report that much of that work has um, uh, not been, uh, not proven to be necessary, that we have not seen the use of the surge hospitals at the level that everybody was nervous we would. I think that's a sign of the success of the state's uh, overall response. Uh, that we've been able to manage the surge of patients in hospitals and not have to rely on our surge hospitals on our campuses, uh, but clearly we ex ex expended some considerable funding to uh, to make those facilities available. Uh, we also have expenditures around personal protective equipment, uh, cleaning services, uh, and sort of miscellaneous expenses related to the shutdown of our campus. We also donated as of April seventh. Uh, $170,000 worth of uh, mostly personal protective equipment, um, uh, but also some uh, more durable equipment that we donated uh, from stores that we had on our campus to um, uh, first responders and, and others. Uh, and we consider those donations an expense because we will obviously have to uh, re replenish those supplies. So again, I expect that the, that number will rise, although uh, because the largest single expense is the um, uh, tuition and board refunds. Now, the point I would last point I'll make about that is that the second half of the CARES Act money, the second uh, $27 million, uh, is, has been identified for institutional purposes. And one of the things that, they, that we are allowed to use that for um, is to reimburse ourselves for refunds that we paid out. So, um, the refunds at the colleges uh, amounted to um, just over a million dollars. Uh, I'm sure we will reimburse ourselves for that, but we will have an additional um, uh, $13 million or so of care for the colleges 
uh, work working to identify um, what those eligible expenses are so that we can fully use those funds uh, rather than give them at the universities. There's no question they they have uh, um, 13 million dollars worth of, of money to cover 24 million dollars worth of expenses. They will reimburse themselves as uh, up to the level of the grant for their uh, room and board refunds uh, and will still have a, a loss of about $11 million across the university system as a result of the um, room and board refunds that they had to make. We're hopeful that the other expenditures they, they had to expend on preparing their campuses for emergency use will be fully reimbursed by the state government out of other funds received by the state for emergency response uh, from FEMA and from the first um, uh, uh, coronavirus legislation that was passed. Uh, but that's um, still, uh, we're still counting up the expenses and expect that to be resolved over the next month or so. Um, the last item I brought from the, the uh, report is the state budget outlook. Um, uh, and I included a, a table showing uh, what our actual uh, major areas of state aid were for the year, uh, what the governor's budget recommendation uh, was, and then what, what the enacted 21 budget um, provides for us. Um, before I, uh, as you know, the legislature has indicated that they are not uh, going to be um, in, in Hartford and meeting prior to the end of their normal legislative session next week. So there will not be a, um, uh, uh, to the budget adopted uh, during the regular session. As you know, we're the fiscal 21 is the second year of a biennial budget. So they have enacted a budget for fiscal 21. Uh, it um, you know, it was enacted a year ago and uh, does not include any of the implications of the coronavirus or a number of other things like funding for the PACT program um, or uh, I'm sure there are other things that it doesn't include, but I'm focused on CSC use issues. So um, the governor had recommended a small amount of money for PACT and some money for guided pathways. Uh, that recommendation is not acted on during the regular session. Uh, there may be a special session in which uh, legislation is passed uh, impacting the budget, uh, but that is not certain. Uh, it's not clear uh, if and when that will occur, and if it does occur, whether they would uh, take up uh, action on the PACT program or guided pathways uh, or anything else. Uh, yesterday, we learned the state came out with their consensus revenue forecast, um, and this consensus revenue forecast um, uh, points to a significant deterioration of, uh, of nearly a billion dollars uh, of uh, off of the revenue for current fiscal year uh, and a similar um, uh, number or slightly, somewhat larger number for uh, for next year uh, in terms of the revenue projections. Um, obviously, there is a rainy day fund that is two billion dollars. Uh, it is. Um, it appears. At, you know, I, I have not seen. Um, uh, Final budget action, and the governor is actually speaking in 20 minutes. Uh, I possibly about budget items. Um, the uh, it does appear, however, that the the extent of the revenue deterioration that is predicted by the let by the uh, consensus revenue process um, does possibly exceed the amount of the rainy day fund or certainly uh, could well, depending on what other expenditure pressures the state is facing. So the state is gonna have to make some difficult decisions. Uh, there is a, certainly a possibility that they will, um, I mean, it is legally uh, uh, conceivable that they will act on, that they will implement rescissions either for this year uh, or for next year. Uh, rescissions could amount to 5% of our, of our, um, of our budget. Uh, which could be quite a lot of money. I mean, that you know, at the at the outside, uh, they could reduce us by twenty five million dollars or so across the um, uh, across the, um, the the entire system. I think that would be uh, about 
certainly hope I'm not alone on this call. I'm thinking that that would be a, a, a very difficult decision for the state to make and one that would have very adverse consequences for CSCU. Uh, we have certainly um, uh, uh, made the case for the value that we bring to uh, fostering recovery uh, for the state. Uh, our important role in work retraining for uh, during a time when there's large amounts of unemployment uh, and the um, stabilizing impact we have uh, on the economy overall. So we're hopeful that the state will not um, seek to address their with cuts to uh, CSU, but it is certainly something we need to be aware of as a possibility and uh, and be mindful of. We may learn about s actions like that soon, uh, especially if they take action in the current year uh, for the year that ends on on um, uh, on June 30th, uh, or um, there could be action taken over the summer, either in a special legislative session or by at, with action by the governor uh, at any time. So I am uh, again uncertain what our future holds with respect to, but there is a lot of uh, of reason for concern given the consensus revenue that was um, announced yesterday. Um, so I, with that, that's, that's the extent of my report, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, I, before we start, I have just a couple of times I was told, uh, you know, everybody may have heard they talked about a potential in August. Well, I, we're now talking about one make up for some of the dollar losses, et cetera, uh, and to take up some of the important critical bills deal. They feel um, uh, so. If they have a question in June, some of our questions will be answered, whether they're positive or negative uh, answers. The other thing is, I heard this morning that uh, we're facing between 21 and 23 a seven billion dollar loss, uh, two billion dollars a year for 21, 22, and 23, and. Um, uh, it's an excess of $7 billion, and um, your comments about us uh, hoping we don't get cut $25 million, et cetera, I think, um, I think is uh, a relevant question and a real concern for all of us uh, who are interested in higher education. Um, the uh, one other comment I would make, and that was that uh, Dr. Blitz had raised a question about the uh, number of ineligible students we had under the CARE Act at Central at 47%. Uh, and I don't know if you did mention that, and I didn't hear it, but I wonder if there was any clarification uh, for that, um, uh, Ben. Yeah, the, the packet that was sent out uh, included a table on CARES Act allocations that identified the headcount and the FAFSA eligible, not FAFSA eligible. And there was a, a miscommunication about the 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 denominator in the the num the total headcount and the number who are FAFSA eligible, and so we had underreported the number of FAFSA eligible students at Central uh, a little bit. Uh, the corrected number is that they have six thousand nine hundred twenty-seven FAFSA eligible students, three thousand three hundred thirty-five not eligible. Uh, so they have thirty-two percent of their students ineligible for FAFSA today. Obviously, we are, you know, they are going to continue to see students fill out FAFSA forms, uh, and we are hopeful that um, uh, we can get some uh, liberalization of the rules from the United States Department of Education so that we can cover uh, the entire uh, group of students or as close to that as possible um, uh, before, the, before we're all done here. Uh, but the uh, we are continuing. Central has already made uh, payments or is in the process of making payments. They certainly made the electronic payments and are in the process of distributing checks uh, to the uh, almost 7,000 students who uh, are clearly FAFSA eligible. And again, they have another pool of about 3,000 out of a total of 28,000 across both systems uh, who are not currently FAFSA eligible. Uh, and we are really doing everything and to find a way to provide assistance to them as well. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Any other questions uh, on this information item by members of the committee? Uh, I had one question, which is related uh, to uh, President Ojekian's letter 
of April 30 that was circulated to us, where he talks about the governor's emergency education relief fund included in CARES and proposes the $5 million to unemployed and to their children. Uh, and the question I have is, is that GEAR fund included in the CARES sums that uh, you've already mentioned to us, or is that something separate? No, that's something separate. The CARES, what I described to you is there, there's the here, there all these wonderful acronyms, the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund. Uh, and of that fund, 10% side for some existing grant programs that the United States Department of Education runs, including some that we receive. We may see some small amounts from that 10% set aside. They're 90% split between student aid and institutional aid. That was the the uh, funding that I described uh, that were, you know, that I went into in some detail. In in another section of the CARES Act, there is the Governor's Education Emergency Education Relief Fund, that is eligible for the governor to spend on K-12 education and preschool, uh, higher education, um, and even uh, you know education-related nonprofit providers uh, are all eligible for that funding uh, at at the governor's discretion. Uh, and the governor has not yet indicated his uh, direction with that, although I'm sure there are many demands for for that funding. Uh, and we have identified it as a uh, possible source for the governor to um, provide support for uh, student financial assistance, uh, either through PACT or through some enhancement of PACT, or um, frankly, if he wants to do it in another way, we I'm sure could accommodate that as well. Uh, we think that student financial assistance is critical given our um, you know, financial circumstances facing our, our, our students and their families. So we are uh, pushing very hard to get that included on the list of priorities. That fund overall for the governor is I think $28 million, if I remember the number correctly. Uh, so 5 million we think is, a, is an appropriate amount for uh, the state to dedicate to higher education, uh, given that they, I'm sure they're going to face um, uh, significant challenges in K-12 and early childhood education as well. Any other uh, comments by members? Uh, if not, I would like to thank everybody for their time and effort uh, for this meeting this morning. Uh, hope all of you stay well and I would entertain a moment, uh, a motion now for adjournment. So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. All of you have a great day and uh, stay safe. Look forward to seeing you or talking to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Thank you.